Hi everyone, this is Silas Ram, AsianCultureVulture.com. We are here in Cannes. It's surreal, it's glitz, it's glam. Is it Cannes or is it Cannes? Everybody's asking you, who's Avela in the casino? Really quite exciting. Everyone is there together. It's like a big, massive party. If no one knows you, you can be anyone you like, right? So hi everyone, this is Silas Ram of AsianCultureVulture.com. I'm with Atika Chowdhury and Bridget Lakwal of Karakian, Suman Butcher and Mumtaz Begum Hussain, who've been ATV presenters in Cannes. We would have been there this year and I know Silas, you were feeling a bit sad, but I said to Silas, let's bring everyone together and have a conversation and, and share those, you know, share those memories that we've, we've had over the last so many years. Last year was my first can, and uh, I was a bit devastated actually. It was, the, it was the rainiest can in history. It was my first time in 2015, so it was such a weird, overwhelming feeling, but trying to be composed at the same time. Getting to meet some of the celebrities, which happened quite quickly. The last day was just uh, incredible, because I think we did Ashwira Rai and Sonam, and uh, they were like in the space of two hours, and I'm me having to go back and get some of your clothes, clothes. there. Oh, we almost missed the bus back. I started Canoe in 2013. I didn't know much people. And the first time I met Ashwara Rai for me, it was like walking on a cloud. It was just a dream because she was the lady who attracted me to watch Indian cinema. I've been to Cannes as a journalist since 2002 and that was the year that uh, the film Dave Das featuring Shah Rukh Khan and uh, Ashwarya Rai was having a screening in Cannes. That was the first time ever that I came to this festival and we were welcomed with such with so much love and warmth. Even actors like uh, Ashwarya Rai and Shah Rukh Khan, although very, very popular, used to come to the India Pavilion and be able to sit there and have a cup of masala chai, which has changed a hell of a lot 20 years later. We went drinking rosé on the pavilion and overlooking the sea. Well, yes, you could say that, but now I would say it's busier. Cannes is very different. Just wandering by celebrities, A-listers, Hollywood, Bollywood, or whatever, whoever they are all over the world. It just feels really surreal. Atika, you uh, interviewed Deepika Padukone uh, in 2000 and I think with 18, yeah. What was that like? We talked about Me Too movement. We spoke about mental health because she suffered from mental health problems. Um, and she's obviously walked Cannes before, but it was for the first time that Asian culture vulture got to really interview her. And you were really excited, weren't you, Silas? Yeah, well. It was a big, uh, it was a big deal for us to get uh, Deepika Padukone. People always see the glitz and glam of it all. So we are the red carpet in Cannes. The fact that we always look presentable, and, but they don't get to see the, the behind the scenes, the work that we have to put in. You have to tell me. Sorry, sorry. I mean, to get an interview with a celebrity isn't easy as, as it is. And to, no. to even get there and to do an interview, it's, you know, the setup, all of that does take a lot of time and planning. Well, Things have changed a lot since we first started. I remember us going to L'Oreal and requesting the interview, and it was really as straightforward as that. But now you have to deal with a PR two or three months mm. before, and then it becomes a big slog. I have to pinch myself when we went in 2015, and we just went up to the PR, the little office up there in the Martinez, and just said we would like to do an interview with the... L'Oreal ambassador, that's where I sound and Kapoor and said, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll get back to you. And on the last <laughs> day, they did. The day that we were flying out, by the way, the yeah. day that we were flying out. <laughs> Can you believe and that? Me, I was like, a, I was a wreck because I was thinking, we've come all this way and we haven't got one. And then suddenly the last day, everything fell into place. In the last two hours, we did Ashwira Rai and we did Sonam Kapoor and we just yeah. made it to the... Um, to the bus back to the airport and I can yeah. still remember Michael editing in the airport as we were because the plane after all that got delayed by three hours <laughs> you know <laughs> 
2008 or 7 when um, Ashima Luwalia made Miss Lovely and it had a screening at the uh, Festival de Palais. There was a, a, a guy standing to one side and nobody was paying him any attention. He was actually Nawazuddin Siddiqui. I got the chance to talk to him because of the, he, mostly he spoke Hindi and nobody else was speaking to him. So uh, I feel that it stood me in good stead because since then his career has grown so much. And I, I feel those kind of relationships that you build over time, if you go regularly in can, are kind of uh, another one of the plus points of, yeah. of going there really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have the gorgeous Sonia Kapoor. It is 20 years of L'Oreal and she is there, one of the L'Oreal ambassadors. I think Sonia was one that really touched me because my sisters have been joining me over the last few years. And um, she re she resonated with my sisters, but she's quite close to her sister. That was a really nice moment where she remembered my sisters and, and we connected again the following year. And the connection that we had just got nicer each year. Yeah, you know? Did you tell me this? And I was like, yeah, you would. Yeah, yeah I remember yeah. having this conversation yeah. with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She styled you also at one point. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. See, not bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> Good memory. Yeah. The last interview I did with her, was just so lovely and it was just, it felt like not even an interview, it felt like just a chit chat that we were having as mates, you know. Sonam Kapoor, thank, thank you so you. much for joining Hi. us. Thank you. Brigitte Leloir, Kira Kian for Asian Culture Vulture. In 2017, it was great to meet Diamond, of course. I couldn't imagine that he would come to Cannes because very few South Indian stars come to Cannes. He was very shy. He felt very honoured and uh, to, to be there in oh. Cannes and always very modest as many sa South Indian stars are like that. She was really lovely. She had this wonderful calmness around her and, and she was messing around with me at the beginning. Like she was just having a hair and makeup touched up a little bit by her makeup artist and, and, and she was just like engaging me at the same time. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? There's a moment I think we caught that on camera, and um, she's like peekaboo, and I'm like, what is she doing? What, what is that even? What is she? You know, it was just little things like that. That um, she was that, quite playful, actually. Uh, looking back at them, and you'll be able to see see that film. She seemed very relaxed and happy, and you know. Yeah, she is. I watched an early morning one, I watched a mid-morning, I watched a lunchtime one, I watched an evening one, I remember you and I said we did go to one at 1am. The late night screenings, I don't think anywhere does them routinely or quite in the same way. I didn't last very long. <laughs> one year Sharmila Tagore was a judge and she said that, you know, she's been getting up really early in the morning and watching wall-to-wall -wall films. So by the time the evening comes around, it's you need to rest your eyes as well before you start the next day and see films. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! My first experience of watching a film in Cannes was Mad Max. That was my first ever film. That's a good one to watch. It was so good. It was a remake, not the original. That's no, not the original, the remake, with Tom Hardy and Shani Saron. You want to get through this? Let's go! I mean, I, I would never forget that experience, just being this weird, big, massive cinema um, and just getting to see it firsthand for anyone else and then getting to review it afterwards. How wonderful is that, right? Wow. The one thing I, I, that I learned at the festival, only when you go there, that you realise yeah. the festival, one part is the award part of it, where all the glitz and glamour is. And then you go into the basement where you see the whole world showing their wares, right? I remember Grinda Chandra telling us a story where when she took Bennett like Beckham to Cannes, she had uh, these little premieres and mm. these premieres are only for people who were going to buy the film, not for press. Like we couldn't go into those premieres because yeah. these were films still need to be sold and what have you. So there's a whole different side to can, which is, uh, it, how can I put it? It's like uh, going to the ideal home exhibition yeah, where yeah. you can view all the products. It's a, big, it's a big marketplace. That's the it's thing. Amazing. It's amazing. Like it, 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 Let's face it, films are best watched on a big screen if they've been made for a yeah. big screen. 
So when you're yeah. in can, I mean, I think that is what I really find inspirational about the festival, leaving aside the glitz and the glamour, which is mm -hmm. like the fun bit. The most inspirational bit is that as soon as you get to the walking the palais, the promenade, everybody's asking you, vous avez l'invitation? You know, do you have an invitation? Can you give me a ticket? You know, either they're asking you for a ticket to a screening, which is not in your gift to give because you yeah. don't really have it, or people are in trying to, the people who are in the market are pressing on you uh, something about their film so that you can come and see it, write about it if you're a journalist, or just generally support it in some way. I, I find that extremely inspiring. When I watched the lunchbox, which was not in the official uh, yeah. Cannes uh, selection, I think it was I thought, well, it's a shame, it's a shame when you see this guy in front of his, uh, of his tin can and he's waiting and you're waiting with him and this is cinema this is what you want to know about this character really at Cannes they could open more to these type of movies I think the Indians really fall foul of that in you know because they find it hard commercial movie means Bollywood and that that's never going to be an official selection and then the more kind of independent type production which Lunchbox was it's quite rare for them to come up with a story that kind of works on a level for a European audience and a Western mm -hmm. audience. In India, the lunchbox wasn't a runaway success, but no. um, it, it did well enough. But outside India, it was incredible. I mean, I still remember my interview with Irfan and he was telling me about being a romantic. And at the time it sounded, uh, and now it, it kind of makes complete sense. Obviously that it's come kind of full circle and it, it's slightly sad, but it's also, it's kind of thrilling in a way because you saw that artist's journey. This was a movie that he was really emotionally invested in because I remember him telling me he was associate producer, so he really believed in the film and he was right. Dear Ilab, things are never as bad as they seem. walking on the closet on a on an evening evening gown with uh, tuxedos and very uh, with very made up etc and you find it very strange <laughs> actually it's in the middle of the after afternoon either they've had a great night out and they haven't gone back home or they're they're actually going to something in the evening and they have to be you have to wear a black jacket and a tie or you have to wear well, I'm disappointed you haven't worn that silage for our little can reminiscence. Get to <laughs> oh, I've I've been the very first time I went, I didn't have a tie, and you know, I, I, you can buy a tie in the little area before you go into the um, cinema. When I turned up to uh, ask for tickets for um, a Rocket Man red carpet last year. Um, and I didn't, I hadn't packed a black dress. So I had a black dress with uh, tiny red flowers on okay. and I had a scarf, which on one side was all colorful and the reverse of it was black. So what I actually did was I wore the reverse of my scarf and I went on that way. And uh, I thought it was actually so pretty up. disappointing, but at least I got through. In 2015, it was my first um, press red carpet. I had no idea that I had to wear black. I went in like a jumpsuit, <laughs> like a like, floral jumpsuit. And luckily I had a black blazer. The woman was like, I don't think I can let you in. I said, oh, but please, can you please let me in? I said, this is my first time. I had no idea. You can kind of swindle your way through a little bit. I mean, yes, they can be very strict, but. When you came through with us in 2018, uh, right. you managed to get in with your trainers and jeans to a World Cup a world premiere. World premiere of Black Handsman, the new Spike Lee movie. Sally said to me, dude, I've been here for over 10 years. You cannot go onto the red carpet with trainers. You're not going to you with jeans. You haven't got a tie on, you've got a bow tie. I said, dude, now that you said that, I'm going to go with my jeans and my trainers and no bow tie. And I'm going to get onto there, go into the red carpet. Mumtaz, tell me about the fashion last year because you, you wrote quite a lot. You did a film. One of the most fashionable places 
in the world. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I felt a bit like a celebrity stalker, to be honest. Um, I found myself a spot in one of the hotels where the celebrities hang out, and actually, this is where they first emerge. So before any of the press get their photographs um, of them on the red carpet, they obviously walk down the stairs of the hotel, and they have to walk through the lobby. Um, and so actually, I was there, and I pretty much got the very first look of a lot of celebrities, um, like when we had Deepika, who had this like dress with a crazy bow on and this big crazy green outfit and we actually had Ashwarya walking out with her daughter so actually being the first to see that outfit it was really quite exciting. You caused a bit of sensation yourself you got into the pages of the Hollywood Reporter. Yeah well that was just super exciting I remember the three of us uh, you and me um, and our, our cameraman and we were just there having lunch and all of a sudden someone from Hollywood Reporter just came up to me and said oh can I take your photo so yeah I made it in, uh, into the pages of the magazine. Was there any of the uh, stars that you really you really liked what they were wearing in terms of they really stood out and really said a lot to you? Um, I actually thought that I was more the other way for example you know there were people I thought could have been better mm. so like oh, okay. I remember seeing Priyanka and she was wearing just a most ordinary LBD little black dress and I just thought it could have been a bit more creative. Yeah, you could even miss that. her on that red cup. I was looking at the film today, mm. and I think Deepika's just uh, a bit ahead of her, and she's obviously very, you know, and got a lot of comments. And It's all about um, marketing and promoting of yourself. That's all it's for. Um, and it's just about making grand entrance. I have to say, one of the things that shocked me about Cannes, I had no idea this happened. I didn't realise that celebrities, they just turn up on the red carpet, mm. they get packed, and then they leave. So there's me thinking they watch the films as well, but they don't watch the films, they're only there to get photos on the red carpet. So if you're only there for that reason, you should really make an effort. There's so many parties and stuff, things going on, that not that we get to go to them, we're working and we got to get up and uh, write or film and edit and all that kind of stuff but it's there if you want it. I mean I went a few times over the years but I did make a conscious effort to go to one yeah. in 2018 because I'm just so tired all the time I just physically mentally didn't have time to and I really wanted to get to meet people and get engage with them but I was just like I just don't have the time but it was so awesome when you did get there because I had amazing food by the way. Going to one part you get invited to another one and, and there is a way if you get into one there is a way of networking which you can utilize if you are an actor or a producer or a director, Absolutely. or if you're someone who's never experienced can, get into one party, blag your way in, and you'll be okay. Because I blagged my way in by accident because I went to the wrong venue. And what's your name? And I said, my name is Sunny from uh, the BBC. Uh, you're not on the list. And uh, who, who's your contact? I said, well, hold on a minute. I looked on my phone and I couldn't read the name. I just showed him a picture on Wikipedia of a film that I think I got the wrong film. <laughs> like, come on in and then I ended up and then the actors came in and the producers came in and I went I know who that is and I don't want to name drop right now but they were really big thank you guys it was fantastic thank you very uh, honoured and uh, delighted to have got you all together I think it was a really great conversation we had and um, I hope we'll see you again all soon Bye. 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 Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.